Twitch, we can try to connect the dots. Yeah, I'm just setting up the, the title, the notifications, and uh, yeah, I guess it's fine. Perfect. Run an okay. ad as soon as I can. Should I press the start streaming? Do it. Do it now. Okay. No going back. Yeah, I hope everything is set up correctly. <laughs> What's the worst thing that happens? It fails spectacularly? That's fine. All right, so stream together. Is that what we want? I think so. Or there is Start some streaming knocking together. to each other. Um, start sharing chat. Invite guests. Shrepin. The true I pin. Favorites. Okay, I think I invited you. Oh, I don't even know where it should show up. I have no idea. Maybe your notifications. Uh. Nope, there is nothing in my notifications. Weird. Because I found you on the invite guests thing. There's Troopin. That's your symbol. I hit send invite. It says I took the action. Maybe go to the stream together button. I, I think there is something to set up in the OBS or... I don't think it's OBS related because it, it's in in Twitch on the left screen. There's a stream together button. Maybe hit that. I'll take a wow, that's loud uh, photo of it here. It looks like that. Okay. Uh, here stream together. I uh, yes, I am inside this. Start streaming together. Oh, get started. And maybe you can I... see my invite from there. I think you have to press start streaming to get there or. Yeah. Invite a guest. And you still can't see my invite. Uh... Oh, wait, I have the invite. Let's this see. feels different than collaboration, though. This almost feels like doing the discord voice call all over yes. again. Is this the wrong thing? <laughs> I have no idea I, what I'm I doing. No. <laughs> so, so I guess it's it's working or oh, ah yeah, it's working. It's it's showing up on on the stream. Is it? I I think it does or or it doesn't. <laughs> oh yeah, I see I see you here now. Okay. Perfect. So then start sharing chat. Here we go. Shared chat with Cardax and Troopin. I think it's working. And then I muted oh. myself in the Discord thing, or in the Twitch thing, because we're here uh, on Discord. Yeah, I, I think I'm also muted there. So then I think it's, I think we're all good. We'll find out when people show up here in a second. Yeah, sure. Let me, uh, so let's see, I'll announce it on, I'll announce, oop, there, my own voice. Uh, I'll announce it on the Discord, the Factorio Discord real quick. Yeah, I have the bot to announce my streams on my YouTube, on uh, my Discord channel, but this okay. bot takes like a few minutes to Yep, work. same, same. Troopin and... I are podcasting. Come join. Okay. And then I'll post it to the Factorio. So now when channel. I write something in my chat, it's also showing up on your chat. Yeah, that's why it's cool. Yeah, awesome. So I guess okay. it's, it's working. Yeah. Never done this before. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, bring this back. Bring your little green, your little green lines back. Okay, I need to sit a little farther away. 
Get everything arranged. Is nobody here yet? Uh, some people are here. We'll give them. We'll give them a couple minutes to show up. Okay, sure. So maybe I'm gonna read the Factory of Friday facts in the meantime. There you go. Study, study up. Yeah, what what is here? Ah, some Gleba stuff. Gleba. So I I have a I have a question. I'm gonna save it for the for the stream though. But I I have some Gleba questions for you. Ah uh, yeah, I, I can't wait. <laughs> All right, so that's going. Let's see. Oh, I probably should have my show notes open somewhere. That's important. There we go. Yeah, I also gonna bring the notes. Yeah, your secret notes that you're gonna surprise me with. Sounds fun. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Thanks again for hanging out. It was a blast to to have you on the podcast. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. It's been really fun to to kind of hear different different people talk. You know, Factorio or other Factor games. It's just been the podcast has really become something more more interesting than even I thought it would be when when I started it. So it's been really yeah, fun. like like if you want to start a podcast, it's it's nice because you're making some nice content. But at the same time, it's very good for yourself because you're meeting so many new people and mm -hmm. you can just talk with them and ask them questions. Exactly. And I feel like the the land party has really brought together the Factorio community, which has been cool. Like, I think a lot of the creators were kind of all in separate places, but then the land party brought a lot of people together. And now the, you know, the beta discord has brought people together in a cool way. Uh, yeah, definitely. But we'll talk. There was there was a few creators in the same team during the land party. So when you have to play with them for like, Mm -hmm. the week so <laughs> you have to be friends with them exactly exactly what's up jacob welcome welcome did you announce this on your youtube channel i don't know because it's the bot i guess the bot doesn't work so i probably should announce it uh, now do you have any good announcement uh, message or i have to come up with something uh let's see I mean, I have my go live notification that I use, but that's going to be a little different. OK, the debot just sent the notification. OK, perfect. Perfect. So I guess it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as your people know. And and, you know, a lot of people will watch the VOD on YouTube later or on Twitch later or listen to the audio recording when I'll release it tomorrow morning. Um, the actual mp3 to the podcast yeah sure oh there is mr ferrari the mr what's up everybody I creeper oh the mr ferrari is, is is the guy who makes mods and i was talking with him before the podcast because i want to make some custom painful mods for myself when the <laughs> embargo ends and <laughs> yeah that's fun okay what what mods are we talking here has he made? I sh I feel like I'm looking right now. Yeah, like I guess if you want some modder in the podcast, we can look what he made. RPG. Oh, you're the one with frost biters and explosive biters. Nice, nice. I've used. I think I used those ones. What else? Holographic signs. Oh, you're the one that did the Warp Torio 2 expansion. Fun. Science droids. Cool. OK, so the announcement on, on Discord definitely helps. Welcome, yep, yep. everybody. Yeah, people are getting here. All right, we'll give it like another minute, and then we'll we'll dive into the actual like podcast. How good are you with reading people's nicknames? Uh, I'm pretty good, actually, I think, generally. OK, so I, I struggle with reading. <laughs> I mean, it, it helps that English is my first language, you know. 
Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, one other uh, thing is because this is a podcast, you know, that'll go to MP3 format. Um, I generally don't engage a ton with Twitch chat during the cast itself because the people that are listening later to the MP3 like won't feel included in that because um, they don't they can't see the comments or but once in a while if there's a comment that like is really relevant to the discussion sometimes I'll bring it into the podcast like oh someone is saying on Twitch blank 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 and then you can kind of respond to it but I usually don't respond to like most comments on Twitch while we're doing the podcast. Yeah, that that make makes sense. But it's up to you. Like, you know, you it's it's your thing too. So like if you see a comment that you really want to respond to, feel free. I would just recommend you read the comment as well as your response. That way people that are listening later um you know, feel included with whatever was said. Yeah, like there is a different approach to streaming. If you want to make it live, just just with some integration and just read the chat, or if you want to make a content that is also watchable offline, then you have to Right. I go with a different approach. Which is why I normally, when I'm streaming, I just went with the, I'll put chat on the screen itself. So that way people watching later can just read what's being said. And, and I don't have to read everybody's comment. But that can be annoying too for some people. So it's a hard choice. It's something that's sometimes annoying when you edit the video and you have this chat so showing up, some notifications and yeah. Yeah, the, I would only do the chat showing up on videos where I am not going to edit it, but I just upload sections of the stream as videos. Yeah, I am still kind of new to this whole streaming thing, so I don't know what is the, the best way to go. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of options. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Should we, shall we do this? Uh, yes, yes, I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Uh, let me find the right button. Where's the go button? Here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Factory Must Grow, episode 20. Today, we are joined by none other than Trupin. How are you doing today, Trupin? Uh, hello, I'm doing great, and thank you for having me. Yeah, very excited to have you. Um, you know, for those who don't know, Trupin is uh, not a, a Wuba employee. Very important to clarify that. Um, and <laughs> he has done no, a I'm lot not. of... What's that? I'm not the employee. I'm not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's done a lot of really uh, funny content for Factorio and recently did a video kind of covering some behind the scenes of the Factorio land party. So we'll talk some more about that. But we're going to start with another mod spotlight. As usual, we'll discuss the recent Friday facts, which there have been three of since the last podcast. So that'll probably take up a decent amount of discussion. And then we'll talk with Troopin about some interesting things that he has some new takes on from his uh, particular vantage point as a not employee. But first, I want to thank the show's patrons. This show is possible because of you guys, the patrons, the listeners. If you'd like to support the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash crydax and you can subscribe at different tiers there. Uh, but let's move on to the mod spotlight. Today's mod spotlight is the Ruins mod. This one was made by Bilka, one of the Wuba devs, about six years ago. So it's an older mod, but it checks out. Uh, it adds ruins into the world, like destroyed fragments of bases and forts and little oases, um, some turrets and things that might attack you. But Troopin, you've played with this mod, so tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I played a little bit with this mod. I am usually a vanilla guy, so this simple mod, which adds some structures from time to time, it's are very nice because it's not very intrusive and it adds some new content when you explore the factory world. Uh, so it basically has a small chance to generate some new ruin, new structure on uh, chunks you are discovering. And sometimes it's useful stuff, like you can find a car. And if you haven't researched the car and you can just find one, it's, it's very useful. Or you can find some traps and uh, regret them out there. <laughs> so stuff yeah, will like attack you from the, so it's like an enemy force almost in the ruins? Oh, yes, you can find ruins with gun turrets, with traps, and all of that stuff. That's cool. Does it feel... So, I know on Fulgora there are ruins, but those ones don't attack you. Does it feel... Does Fulgora kind of feel similar to that, or is it more... Is it more kind of like... Those are just older... I don't know. What do you... I'm trying to remember what the FFF says about the ruins on Fulgora. It's been a while since that one. Uh, so, on Fulgora, I feel like ruins are just 
some background stuff like trees on the navis that they feel like like that uh with this mod it's just something new from time to time yeah yeah that's cool so yeah the ruins mod is pretty cool i think the idea of adding kind of something to find out in the world is neat because right now you know one interesting thing about factorio compared to a lot of other procedural generation games is there's really nothing to find out in the world it's just ore and biters yes that's true that's it and most games have things you know even minecraft from forever ago had caves at least right or a different and eventually they added villages and they added their own ruins and the underground castles and all sorts of things you know and then factorio comes in and is like yeah if you keep going you'll find some iron you'll find some copper you'll find coal you'll find stone and some biters and that's it <laughs> um so yeah i think the idea of a ruins mod is pretty cool Yes, yes, it, it's very cool. Also, there is an interesting scenario when you boost all of the ruins setting to the maximum stuff, then you can just explore, destroy city of all of that ruins. So if you want to play with a more intrusive mod, then yeah, that's also a scenario you can go with. Oh yeah, that's a cool idea. So uh, let's dive into the FFFs because there's a lot to cover in the last three. There have been two in particular that had Actually, really, all three are big announcements. So I'm going to quickly cover the titles of each, and then we're going to dive in a little bit. So the title to 429 was the Vulcanus Demolisher. And the title to 430 is Drowning in Fluids. And the title for 431 is Gleba and Captivity. So uh, obviously, if you're listening to this podcast, you've been listening to other FFF stuff. It's a little spoilery, right? If you're wanting to keep everything undiscovered, you might want to skip the rest of this podcast because we're going to talk about the things that the FFFs announce. And I feel like, you know, they're fairly big features, but obviously we won't be able to discuss anything that the FFFs have not announced. So, you know, there's no extra spoilers here. But yeah, Vulcanist Demolisher, uh, big worm. Uh, it is very tough to kill and it has insane region. So they, you, you should go watch the FFF on this one. Cause they've got really cool gifts and videos, but it is a really neat enemy. Um, how do you kill it? Troopin? Uh, I don't know if it's covered in the FFF or not. So I don't know what can I talk about, but when oh. I played with the worm, <laughs> I just lived in peace with him i haven't bothered him he <laughs> haven't bothered me so that was my way to deal with the worm there you go your way to deal with it is to not deal with it let let tomorrow troop and deal with the problem yes so yeah in the fff they they show a video of it just demolishing the base which is its name it is called the demolisher and it really earns that name it basically just flows through your base as if your base doesn't exist and everything it touches just turns to dust and explosions um, so they talk about in the FFF, the enemy has a ton of regen. So it's a different kind of enemy. We've talked about the pentapod enemies before on Gleba and, you know, they talked about some of the biter changes and the nest changes, but the demolisher is different because it has a, a ton of regen. So even if you have a lot of damage, eventually you'll kill other stuff but you won't kill the demolisher. You have to out DPS it. Like the damage you're dealing per second has to outdo its region. So it's kind of a different form of fighting where you're trying to figure out, and they talked about this in the FFF, like how do you deal a lot of damage at one time rather than just how do I make sure I deal enough damage eventually? So they talked about people getting creative in the land party with different ways to kill it. And I'm really excited to, to fight this enemy myself. The, the other big difference that we should talk about in the FFF is they're not enemies that are attracted by pollution. Instead, they're protecting territories. And that's why Troopin was saying he could live in peace with them, because if you don't go into their territory, they don't mess with you. And they show the territories on the map. So you can kind of just decide, oh, I want to go unlock this area. I'll go fight this one worm. And then I'll have that area as area that I can build my base in freely. So it's I like that they changed kind of the territory. They went to a territory system rather than a pollution system. How do you feel about that? Uh, I think it's uh, something different. Great, great solution. Uh, because having the same system on every single planet would be boring. So yeah, this is something new and I really enjoy it. Yeah. 
Um, so the other thing <laughs> that is is funny about the worms is like they they do such a large amount of damage that I feel like they're going to be a little bit polarizing. You know, I think some people are going to struggle because they kind of talked about this with the FFF where like if people are going to struggle to deal with them, I think a lot of people are going to be frustrated with them because once you if you accidentally lure one back to your base, you're just going to lose your whole base and you're not going to be able to do anything about it. Uh, but I think they said in the FFF that like about half of people just ran away and that was like maybe the best solution is <laughs> just run from it because you can outrun it, but it's uh, it's really interesting. All uh, right, well, during clank party, what's that? During clank party, uh, during the LAN party, there was the the situation when the worm just go through people's base because they was running from him, and the worm was chasing them, and it didn't end up well with the whole factory. Yeah, because they ran through the base, and the worm was yes. following. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like it's cool that you can even figure out like okay let's make an area where we can lure the worm back to this area where it'll be the kill zone you know i i think it just has a lot of cool gameplay uh to it that i'm excited to get into so the next fff because we got to keep rolling here otherwise we'll be here all day uh is 430 drowning in fluids this is a big this is a big announcement because we've already covered the fluid rework in a previous FFF where fluids now kind of they don't flow from pipe to pipe, but rather a pipe system has kind of a fill amount. And as it fills up, it'll flow faster out of the system. And basically, they said people were cheesing the system. It was too easy. They just had a global pipe network. So what they did is they made it so that you can only transfer fluids within a 250 by 250 box. And if you try to build pipes out of that box so the your whole system is bigger than that, then they'll stop flowing. So you need to pump fluids from one section to another now. And I actually think this is a really cool change. I think it makes it so that you now have to have thought to which direction your fluids are flowing. You know, like in general, are they flowing east or west? Because now you kind of have to pick. Um, I guess you can set up a circuit system to make sure that both sections have enough, but you can't just have one global fluid network anymore. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, what else did they do? They nerfed pumps so that they're a little slower. Mostly the difference is going to be felt with train wagons. Now they don't fill in like half a second, but they actually take like 10 seconds to fill or something they said uh, if you're using multiple pumps. And then the other minor change is that the output and input flow rates are now proportional to the fullness of the pipe network. And that's a lot of words, but basically what it means is if your pipe network is more full, it'll output into things faster. If the pipe network is more empty, things will be able to input into the pipe network faster. Both of those things are proportional. So what that means really is that your pipe networks will find kind of an equilibrium in how full they are, depending on how many things are grabbing from it and how many things are inputting to it. So I don't know. How have you felt about the new fluid system overall? I'm curious on your thoughts. Uh, so my short answer to it is the new fluids feels worse in the small bases, but they are better for the huge mega bases. Okay. Because in the early game, I was sometimes confused why there is no fluid here. And then turns out the pipe was too long. And this is why the whole system was not working. So the system sometimes is actually more confusing than it used to be because the, the previous system was just intuitive. The, the fluid was flowing. So yeah, very easy to, to learn. But now it's, it's different. Interesting. Yeah, I'm excited to try it out because I think it, it has some, some big differences from the old system. But at least with the new one, the nice thing is that you don't have to worry about building a lot of straight pipes <laughs> rather than underground pipes because it'll flow at the same rate either way. Because that was something annoying about the old system was you felt like you had to use undergrounds to keep the flow rate up and stuff. But I don't know. We'll see. I have my reservations about the fluid system, too. I kind of liked the flow of the old system and I kind of I think I'm going to miss that. But um Oh, yeah. And someone on Twitch is mentioning, uh, thank you for reminding me, the water to steam ratio has been changed. So now every water makes 10 steam. And that's going to mean that bringing water to places where you're making nuclear reactors or whatnot will be more viable now because, you know, a barrel of water will essentially be able to hold the water for 10 times as much power. So that's that's pretty cool. 
All right, any other thoughts on the fluid systems? Uh, yeah, when I was talking with, with developers during the LAN party, uh, I was saying that I kind of don't like the new fluids in the early game, but at least the performance is better. So he mentioned that performance is actually worse with this system <laughs> because before it was multi-threading and now it doesn't, but it's it's work in progress. Oh, interesting. That's funny. Yeah, I I think a lot of things that people were saying when they first announced the fluid change was like, oh, now fluids will be better. Like your giant nuclear plants in the late game won't use as much UPS. I'm also curious how like the mega base fluids versus small base fluids, like maybe the mega bases work better than they used to, or is it just across the board the performance was worse? I don't know. I haven't done any research. This Interesting. Was the small talk I did. Yeah, that's funny. Okay, so finally, the third FFF that we have seen since the last podcast was Gleba and Captivity. This one's very exciting. Um, so, Trupin, I'll let you take the lead on this one because you have a lot to say about Gleba. So, what what did they announce in this FFF? Oh, no, I, I haven't read it because I <laughs> just have the practical experience with Gleba, so maybe you can take the okay, lead. Okay, okay. I'll summarize the changes at least. So, basically, before... Uh, we know that, you know, we had heard some things from the land party and from people who had been in the land party that Gleba was kind of in a rough spot. People weren't loving different parts of it, and it didn't quite feel like the rewards you got from going to Gleba quite were worth it. And so a lot of people had it last on their list of planets, whether it's you should go there last or it's my least favorite. It was pretty much kind of it was in the rear. And so they decided to make some changes. And I think it's really interesting because one, I think it's interesting they, they're making changes this large to the game this late in the process. I think it actually shows a lot of maturity in the team because I think it means that they're saying, hey, this is something that if we didn't change it, it would actually cause a worse gameplay experience for players. And even though it is a little risky to change it this late in the process, we'd rather take that risk and at least bring it a lot closer to something that we really want. And then maybe that means when we launch the game, there will be a few things we still have to balance out properly. But at least the system that we want is there. So I'm really glad that they changed this this late in the process. I think a lot of dev teams would say, no, it's too late. We can't change it. We'll just try to improve it slowly. I'm really glad. So what are the changes? Well, what they did was they talked about one of the issues with that was that ores and circuits, which you needed to produce for rocket stuff, was a totally separate process from all the bio stuff. And now they changed it so that there are these bacterial stromatolites, I think is the word they used or something. And basically they're like bacteria that have uh, trace minerals in them. And now you essentially are using some of the same processes to collect your bio stuff for Gleba. And then you can turn that into ore as well. So that's allowing you to get your copper and iron kind of while you're doing the other stuff you'd normally be doing rather than needing to do it as a separate process. So that kind of reduces the frustration of players. And then the other big changes they made is what are the rewards for going to Gleba? So now, and I'm sure there's lots of things that they didn't spoil in the FFF that we don't even know about, but mainly they talked about you can use the combination of bio resources from Gleba in a robot on Nauvis to capture a biter nest and they show a little gif of it. it. There's this little robot that goes and it like joins in with the biter nest. It looks very almost like a Zerg type thing, like biomechanical thing. It captures the nest and it's got like an air pump, like pumping into it. And if you keep feeding it with these bio resources that you get from Gleba, you can get biter eggs out of it. And then those biter eggs allow you to improve, they say improvements to agriculture, crafting productivity module threes, and because they didn't quite feel like the Gleba unlocks were enough, they added a bio lab, which is a new research lab that has four module slots instead of three. And it only uses half resources, meaning it literally makes all your research packs twice as productive. And that multiplies with the productivity bonus. So if you have your fully legendary prod mod threes in this lab, you'll be getting four times productivity from every pack. 
that's a pretty huge deal. So now Gleba is very much competitive in terms of its rewards. And if you're like, oh, I could go to Gleba first, get this crazy good research lab, and then I won't have to make as many packs for the rest of the game. It'll allow me to reduce my infrastructure. I just feel like now it's so much more of an interesting choice. So really cool FFF. Um, and again, check out the art in, in the FFF. There's all sorts of cool things. But that's kind of the summary of the uh, logistical pieces. Trupin, thoughts? Uh, yeah, so since you summarize it, I can talk about the, the problems of Gleba. So there was like uh, four of the biggest problems for Gleba. First was the, the rewards was kind of lacking. Now with this new Biter lab, yeah, that's something worth uh, going for. Also the difficulty on Gleba, it was very tough to deal with the spoilage, with the recipes, and they did some tweaks to all of that. Spoilage is still in the game. You still have to deal with all of this pain, but now it's it's more uh, intuitive. Also, the map world generation, that was a big problem of Gleba because he was respawning and the closest plants uh, you have to get and the closest minerals you have to get, they were so far away that when I was playing, I thought that there is some bug and they just don't respawn on my map. Like, what, what is wrong? <laughs> So now you have the now they are easier to find. Also, before the bacteria and making the resources from bacteria, you just um, get a very small ore patches, like ten miners uh, big, but they were very big, uh, very rich. So you you could only put ten miners, but there was like thirty million iron it in it, and that was the, the previous approach to making resources on Gleba. Uh, yeah, also... which then also kind of encourages you to want to go to Vulcanus first to get the big mining drills for that. Yes, that was a big problem of going Gleba first because he was lacking the technology from other planets, which was very, very useful on uh, Gleba. Now you can go Gleba first and it still be kind of fine. <laughs> Not <laughs> the best experience, but now it's it's way better. Yeah, that's also... awesome. Talking about the, the biter uh, captivity and uh, capturing them. So this feature uh, is in the expansion for actually a very long time. But the change was what you are getting for it. It was changing like every few months what you are getting from captured uh, biter nest. Like all time ago, you was getting some poop from them and you was able <laughs> to craft some stuff with it. But yeah, they, they scrapped this idea. Uh, then he was able to use it to craft the science packs. But yeah, they also changed that idea. And now you can use the biter nest to make biter eggs and to make the biter labs. So yeah, it, it went a lot of different iteration. Yeah, that's super cool. Another thing I wanted to note for those who are wondering at home, like, wait, I like to play on uh, biters off. Like, I don't I don't do biters in Factorio. Um, and they did think about you. Don't worry. Uh, now, if you turn biters off, the nests will still spawn so that you can capture them for biter egg production and whatnot. Um, and one other thing they mentioned is that the biter eggs, if you let them they are spoilage active and if you let them spoil they will turn into live biters so any place that you've got biter eggs you're gonna have to be really careful with what you're doing with them otherwise you might have enemies inside of your base that you didn't plan for um yeah, especially when you are in the map view and you're doing something in the other planet and then you realize you had the biter's eggs inside your inventory it can end up bad <laughs> that's amazing oh my gosh i hadn't even thought of that yeah i'm really excited i also think a lot of people are going to have some fun using the biter eggs as almost like a spawn button for enemies just to test your defenses almost uh, so you could like set up an area where you let a bunch of eggs spawn and then watch what your defenses do i don't know it's kind of fun to be able to like manufacture enemies um so i think that's actually really cool anyway so those are the ffs i highly recommend you guys go check them out but we've got troop in here which is really exciting um so I, first i want to talk a little bit about the land party so that was now about a month ago, right? I, I can't remember the exact dates, but you released a video on your YouTube channel kind of showing a few things behind the scenes. So Troopin, in the video, you know, you, you claim you do not work for Wooba and you show us, you know, a few lanyards that 
that have your name on them that maybe also say the words Factorio team or whatever. So, so I mean, what what's true here? Do you or do you not work for Wuba? So, you know, there is a lot of misinformation in the internet, so it's hard to to find out the, the truth. Uh, but I'm not uh, listed as a developer on the website, so I do not work for them. Like, there is no, no way. There's no way, right? Um, yes. Yeah, of course. So given that you don't work for them and you're just a random person, uh, why did they choose you as such a random person to do all of these things for the LAN party? Uh, so there was two big reasons why I wasn't playing as a normal player. Uh, the first one, I simply knew too much. When the LAN party uh, started, uh, before that, I already beat the game like three times. So playing it during the LAN party with other teams, I would give huge dis uh, huge advantage to my team compared to other ones. Like See, I guess you're too good. A, uh, may maybe not too good, but if I was in a team with speedrunners, my knowledge and their skills that would end up with pretty quick <laughs> gameplay. And the second reason, there was a big screen during the LAN party, and they needed to put something on it. So my computer was. Uh, linked to that uh, big screen during the whole event. So that was the second reason. Of course, of course. So, okay, all, all the fun aside, how, how was the LAN party? Tell us a little bit about it, because you, you have a fun perspective, I'm sure. Ah, uh, yeah, from my perspective, it was way more stressful than from <laughs> other people. <laughs> I have to keep track with uh, all of the, the times when the uh, lunch... Uh, um, I went to turn off the servers when the day starts and keep all of that in mind. Also, the, the day was very dynamic. It was changing from day to day. And uh, yeah, there was way more chaos than I was expecting. Yeah, that's how pretty much everything goes, right? Even when you play Factorio, that's that's what you expect. So it makes sense that a Factorio land party went that way. Uh, what are some behind the scenes things that you can tell us? Uh, the behind the scenes, like Voop is not familiar with making the events, like they are not doing it very often. So yeah, there was some chaos from time to time. Uh, like for example, uh, there was uh, the, not enough food, like the portions was too small. So then you have to on the fly fix the problem, how to feed people more, how to make them happy, because playing Factorio takes a lot of calories from your brain and you uh -huh. uh, yeah, need a lot of food. So for example, yeah, you have to fix it on the fly during the event. Yeah, that's hard. Um, man, I wonder, yeah, gosh, it's so hard to plan for how much people eat. Because like the other hard part is like everybody eats a different amount. So even if you plan for 100 people or whatever, it doesn't mean you're going to have enough food. I don't know. That's hard. Yeah, and some people are vegans, some prefer meat, some mm -hmm. go out and eat uh, somewhere else and then come back to the event. So it's it's very hard to plan stuff like that. That Also, um, when we was installing the factorios on, on computers, we used the pen drives. And after the installing all of the factorio, we realized that there was something wrong with the pen drive. Uh, we bought 10 pen drives and five of them was kind of corrupted. Oh no. And the computers that was uh, uh, installed at Factorio from those pen drives had some problems and fixing that was uh, taking some time from us. Oh, that's pain. Jeez. Oh man. So um, what was one of your favorite parts of the LAN party? Uh, meeting with all of the people from the community. Like you can talk with anybody and they know what you are talking about. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, a any bunch question of question about about Factorio and they can share uh, their opinion with you. So that was great to just meet the people. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, so so the land party was something that I just think was a really cool move um, from Wuba to be able to a just bring you know, people to test their game and, and try out a bunch of things and get useful feedback. Like obviously this Gleba change is in large part because of all the people that were able to play it at the LAN party and since then. So I think that's actually a really cool move. But I also think it's brought the community together a lot, at least from my perspective as a creator. I've noticed 
more creators either doing things together or chatting in each other's discords or in YouTube comments or whatever it is, I think it's brought a lot of the creators together because as content creators, we're often so busy either with our own communities or making our own content that we don't really have a ton of time or energy to just be a member of someone else's community. So we often are kind of disconnected in these silos. Um, but I feel like the land party brought everybody together and the beta discord is bringing a lot of creators together. And I, I just think that's really cool. So I've, I've been enjoying seeing meeting other creators myself and seeing other creators interacting with each other, whether it's mod makers with, you know, streamers or whatever, but it's been neat. Yes, I 100% agree with that. Uh, when it comes to LAN party, I was hoping it would be more like a marketing thing to invite more content creators, uh, also from other niches like Satisfactory and uh, I don't know, Industry, other automation games. Uh, but no, it was just the, the Factorio community itself. Yeah, for sure. That that would have been an interesting move as well, but that would have required probably a lot more a lot more seats than a hundred. Uh, yeah, true. But yeah, that that does make sense because I guess the question is like, is it is it marketing? Is it balance testing? You know, and it feels like it was a little bit of both. But you're right. If they had brought in like you know Total X Clips or I'm Kibitz or you know some of the big satisfactory streamers, they probably you know, I don't know for sure, but they probably would have come because a lot of people like both games. So yeah, it would have been interesting to try to bring in streamers for other games to kind of get the the Factorio name a little wider. But who knows? Who knows what would have happened? Um, so yeah, some more questions uh, because we are here and I get to ask you questions, which is very fun. Uh, <laughs> who is Trupin? Uh, who are you? What do you do? Uh, I do YouTube stuff, do confusing videos, tutorials, memes, and all of that uh, stuff. I also stream from time to time, but yeah, I just making factorial content in the internet. How long have you been doing that? Uh, I think it's already four years. So yeah, I'm getting old with this creation. <laughs> what? Uh, so was that the first thing you did with your YouTube channel? Like, was that how you started it? Or did you start doing something else and then switch to Factorio? Uh, so when it comes to me, I like to do research between before doing anything. So before starting YouTube, I just did a lot of research. What should I uh, do? What game? What, how should I edit? Uh, what, what makes good videos and all of that? So when I started YouTube channel, it was Factorio uh, from the very beginning. It was designed for success. <laughs> Interesting. That was my plan. So you actually decided to become a content creator and then you decided you actually picked your game as part of that process? Uh, yes, I, I study computer science. I mean, I, I finished and got my engineering degree like half a year ago and now I'm I'm still a student. I'm just going for next degree. Uh, but yeah, I am related to programming. And when I considering what job I want to get, the idea of being a programmer for the next 40 years, it was, yeah, I like coding, but it might be a little bit too much. So mm -hmm. I was just thinking, hmm, what other job can I get? Being a YouTuber seems interesting. So <laughs> I just decided to be a YouTuber. That's awesome. So yeah, because I feel like that's that's actually pretty different than what most people's journeys look like to become a content creator. A lot of people are like, oh, I just started it because it's a hobby or I started it because I I was playing games and I wanted to share that. And it's interesting that like you actually did the thing where you're like, I want to be a YouTuber. What game should I play? And then you actually did it and you succeeded in that, which is really cool. Um, why Factorio in particular? Like, why was that the game you settled on? Yeah, so like I said before, I was doing a lot of research how to make a successful YouTube channel, what, what to do with all of that stuff. And uh, making a YouTube channel in a niche is like a requirement to, to doing good on YouTube. And since I like playing games, I just went with games. Uh, out of uh, When I was choosing the game to play uh, on my channel, I wanted a game that I have a lot of hours in it. So when I looked at my library of games. It might be <laughs> Minecraft, Leech of Legends, Factorio, or Path of Exile. Out of these games, I have the most experience with uh, Minecraft and Leech of Legends. 
Uh, and Factorio, I actually had the least amount of the experience. But when I dig deeper into all of the, those games, I found some problems. For example, in Path of Exile, in this game, you are getting a new season every three months. Uh -huh. So if I make a video, this video makes no sense the next uh, season. So I would need to grind a lot of videos during the season because the next season, all of the previous videos are gone. So this is why I didn't want to choose Path of Exile. So there are three games left, Minecraft, Leech of Legends, and Factorio. And at this stage, I looked at the community. When it comes to Leech of Legends community, it's a little bit toxic to say uh -huh. at least there are a lot of hardcore players and they are not the, the nicest one. In Minecraft, I think the average age for Minecraft player is a little bit too little for, for my uh -huh. choice. And when I looked at Factorio community, the the average Factorio player, like I imagine, is some guy 20 some years, uh, like uh, computer science, math, programming, and it's a little bit nerdy. I look at myself and wait, that, that that's me. It's my <laughs> description like, of myself. Of course I know him. He's me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's so awesome. That was the main reason why I choose Factorio because the community is basically me. I I mean, and that's a great choice. And I think you know it's interesting, like because as far as I know, and and I there's a good chance I'm missing somebody here because I by no means am watching every Factorio YouTube video ever made. But I feel like you were the first to come on the scene, at least the first on my feed, to come on the scene making what I would consider like meme videos about Factorio. Like no one really was doing that. I feel like most people who were making Factorio videos were making either, OK, I'll make a really careful guide or I'll make a let's play or I'll do you know, a giant challenge like Death World Extreme 600% and then I'll make a video about that. I feel like you were the first person to make like these one minute videos that were just like absolutely hilarious side splitting jokes and memes and silly stuff. So what what kind of drove you to make that that humorous style of video rather than the I don't know, I'll say more boring type videos. I just make videos I would like to watch. Like, uh, if you want to learn something in in anything, you can just go to university and spend a few years learning about it or during uh, boring classes. Uh, or you can just watch some interesting videos. So I wanted to do the same with uh, Factorio. Instead of uh, making some few hours long video about trains, I just like to make some quick one, make some jokes and make people laugh and learn in the meantime. Yeah, and that's the other thing that I love about your videos is even though they are kind of these meme or, you know, quote unquote shit post type videos sometimes, they also have actual information in them. You know, like your tips and tricks videos are both funny, but like they're actual tips too. And so I do think you get, you do a really great job of making these like informative and hilarious at the same time. Um, do you feel like you're a funny person? Oh, that's that's a hard question. <laughs> the question I I don't know how to define what is funny and what's not 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 funny because it depends on on people. Like everybody has a different humor, so I don't know if I can consider myself funny. Like when I make videos, I spend a lot of time behind the scenes editing, writing, and doing all of that stuff. So yeah, after you spend ten hours coming up with some jokes, they has to be funny. <laughs> But when I just talk like that, uh, yeah, I cannot just come with joke on, on the fly. So it depends what is the definition of funny for, for different people. Yeah, because I think what's interesting is like, you know, because you present in the YouTube videos, right, as basically a total comedian. But what's interesting is is like comedians... Are, are all comedians funny people? And some comedians are like, oh, I'm not funny at all. Like, I just write these jokes and that's the only reason I'm funny. And other comedians are kind of more just portraying their normal personality live. And so, like, I think you're hilarious, right? But but it's also like I have an experience of of your 
YouTube personality far more like I didn't I didn't get to meet you at the land party or anything because, I you know, I didn't go. And so it's like there's that part of me that's like, I wonder who, you know, like what is Troopin like when he's not edited or 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 um, scripted? And so I just I always think it's interesting to see like the dynamic personalities because like the edited version of you is you. You are funny because you have really funny YouTube videos and I love your videos. Um, but it's also always interesting to see like how people are different, you know, from their edited self to their non edited self. I love it. Um, so what's what takes most of your time when you're working on these videos? Is it writing? Is it editing? Is it recording? Uh, definitely doing the, the research, just wasting time on YouTube instead of working. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to, to just making the video, I think editing takes uh, the most amount of time. Uh, I usually track the, the amount of hours I spend per, per video, so I can just look it up and see how, many, how, how long I spent on each part. Uh, usually, uh, to make a video, uh, one minute of video takes me between uh, two hours and four hours of work. And it's like, um, yeah, let's say 25% is uh, collecting footage, recording, 25% is uh, editing, or maybe even 35% is editing. Uh, there is also making a voiceover, which for me is a big problem. Like one minute of voiceover in a video takes me one, think, takes me up to 20 minutes to record. Like I sometimes re-record the one sentence multiple times just to make sure that people can understand me and uh, yeah, it's, it's good enough for a video. So this also takes a lot of time for me. Uh, writing the, the scripts, it's not my, English is not my native uh, language. So it also takes way more time than uh, it takes from native speakers. Uh, making thumbnails, <clears throat> it's it's taking me also uh, one hour, two hour, up to three hours per, per video. So that's also not a quick task to do. So all of this add, adds up to like 20 hours, 40 hours per, per video. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. And I mean, it shows like the quality of your videos is top notch. I think you you do such a good, such a good job with the genre you've put yourself in. I, I like no one no one i've seen again i haven't seen every video out there but i haven't seen anyone that comes close to to like putting out the same quality of like meme posts of factorio that you do so i just want to say great job like you're doing amazing well thank you so another question about your process like how do you get the ideas for your videos because you you it feels like sometimes they just come out of nowhere uh, yeah, so I am actually uh, very addicted to YouTube and wasting my time <laughs> in the internet. So this is where my uh, ideas are coming from. Like, I literally think I'm spending a few hours every day just watching YouTube. And it's like, I don't know, 2,000 hours per year just wasting my time on, on watching YouTube. So if you watch this amount of other people's content, you can come up with some original idea for yourself because you just take alter part from this video, something from that video. And when you combine all of this together, you have an uh, awesome idea for, for yourself. Uh, and yeah, that was my, my process to, <laughs> to get the ideas. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, like, I think, again, you know, you say you said you didn't think you were a funny person, but I think you're you're lying to yourself. You're, you're clearly a comedian because that's what all comedians do. Uh, you know, they get they they get their inspiration from from the world around them and the people they watch. So I think you're doing it right. Um, what are what are some videos? So, like, obviously, you do a really good job with your videos. At least that's what I believe. And I think most of us believe that because your view counts are quite high and whatnot. But what are some ideas you've had or videos you've made that have totally not worked or have just flopped? Uh, yeah, so usually when I have bad idea, I just don't make, make the video. Right. <laughs> like when I look at my list of the videos ideas, I have way too many to, to do them. Like it's easy to come up with the idea. It's way harder to, to actually do it. So I have huge graveyard of ideas that I haven't, haven't done. Uh, and yeah, when it comes to videos uh, I did, I would need to look at my uh, un unpublished video. Uh, I don't know if I can bring it up, but 
but yeah, there, there, uh, now I have to think about it. What was the video I, I failed with? Uh, or are there any I, videos even that you, it, maybe it didn't fail like on YouTube, but you just don't like them very much. Uh, that's always an interesting question. Uh, yeah, if I don't like any video, I, I just unpublish it and I forgot about it. So <laughs> maybe maybe there was some video, I, I didn't like it and uh, it's just gone. But usually when there is something wrong with the video, I just spent more hours editing it to make it a, a good one. So and you're very much yeah. a perfectionist, you would say. Uh, kind of, because, you know, it, it takes me so long to make a video that you cannot make everything perfect. Like right now, I'm editing the video out of uh, 50 hours of the whole Space Age uh, gameplay. And I have one week to do it. So there is no <laughs> way it will be high quality stuff. I have to go something in between. Yeah, you got to make some concessions. Crunch time. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to, to come back to editing. And uh, it will be a lot of grinding with, with that stuff. Uh-huh. So, okay, let, let's talk about Space Age a little bit. I had one question earlier about Gleba in particular. So Gleba is a Polish word, right? Uh, yes, that's true. And you are from Poland, right? Uh, it it depends. It depends. And you've been playing. Uh, I... You've been playing Factorio Space Age for a long time, right? Like, ah, uh, yes, that's far that's longer true. than Land Party. So, the real question is: Did you name Gleba? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, I I, I... I wasn't. <laughs> I I was guessing you didn't, but I figured I'd ask. <laughs> I don't know the exact story how the the Gleba was was named. I think it was Kovarex who came up with the idea. Uh, before Gleba had a different name. I think it was Bacchus or something like that. So the Gleba is I don't know one year old name for for the planet. Yeah, it was it was definitely different back when I I remember they had a pixelated like view of the map view in one of the FFFs and someone like depixelated the picture back into the actual letters or something. I don't remember what all of them were, but it, yeah, it was something other than Gleba back then. Um, so, so speaking of space age, what, what can you tell us? Obviously, you know, the, like you can't tell us everything, but what's your overall feeling about it? I know you shared some of these feelings in your video, but I just kind of wanted to chat about kind of the overall vibe of space age. Uh, so when it comes to my opinion about the space age it is were very complicated because I have access to the game for so long that I don't know if my opinion about sending a rocket is from yesterday or from two years ago. All of my feelings are mixed because of that. Like my first experience with the Space Age was with all of the placeholders, with a crash every half an hour or something like that. And it was yeah, it, it was way more painful experience uh, than it is right now. A lot of quality of life that they was added over the the development of Space Age. So two years ago, there was no force building. There was old fluid system. Uh, bots were stupid and all of that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So my overall experience with Space Age is, is hard to, to say, but I think it's good. At the current stage, it's is good. However, I think $35 for it, it's a little bit too much. And I think 25 would be more justified for the for the expansion. Interesting, because I, I have felt as they've revealed more and more from FFFs that they're actually adding more to the game than already exists. Like if you look at everything that's in Vanilla Factorio and then you look at everything that's in Space Age, I feel like that's a bigger list. Even if you're counting stuff like music or art or quality of life, I feel like they're even adding more features into the normal features. I don't know. I So I've actually felt like it makes sense to charge just as much because it almost feels like they're more than doubling the game. So that's an interesting thought. But it is steep. You know, it is steep to charge for a DLC the same amount as a base game. I do agree that that's not necessarily standard. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's a high price point, and I think it will get more justified uh, over the time when there will be more mods to the expansion, when they add uh, new new stuff, polish the the current one, and yeah, I I think it will get to this uh, price mark at some point with the quality. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so with your, you know, you've been playing the game for a long time. What are your plans? So for the viewers and listeners who don't know, the media embargo on Factorio Space Age ends on October 14th, which as of recording, this is only in eight days, which means that streamers who have access, which is a lot of streamers at this point and content creators who have had access can release their videos on YouTube can start making videos. So what's your plan kind of for when Space Age hits on the 14th? So I think I already dug my own grave when it comes to Gleva <laughs> and there is no other way than going to Gleva. So, so are you going to do the, the starting on Gleva? Yes, I made a custom bot uh, <laughs> where you start on Gleva. I was tweaking some recipes to make it possible. And I think 24 hours with Gleba will be uh, my take. Oh, boy. That's going to be amazing. So how are you going to stay awake for 24 hours? Asking the real questions. It's the future Truppen problem, not, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow Truppen can deal with that, eh? Find some, some energy drinks. Because I, I, I myself am doing two 12-hour streams. I call that a 24-hour stream for old men because I'm like, I, I'm not going to do that to my body. So I'm going to stream 12 hours and then I'll go sleep and then I'll come back and do it again. Um, that, but starting on Gleba, that so yeah, it's going to be interesting to how does that even work? Because there's so many, I guess they have iron and copper, but there's no coal, right? Uh, there is coal in the yeah, you can unlock the, the coal making process uh, late game, uh, late with the research. So, in okay. the beginning, you just have to deal without uh, military science packs. And I see, uh, yeah. interesting. <laughs> Well, that'll be fun to watch, I'm sure, because that's that's certainly not the standard Space Age playthrough that you'll be doing. <laughs> yeah, like when it comes to Space Age, for me, it's kind of annoying and bad choice to lock the Space Age behind the whole Navis. Like you have to play the whole factory of vanilla before you get access to the DLC. And when I was talking with the developers, I was always telling them, you have to put something in the early game. Make it more interesting for people. There's so many people that haven't launched their first rocket. You just have to add more content from the space age in the novice. But uh, yeah, there, there is none. Yeah, there's there's not much. I mean, there is all the quality of life changes. Like the trains are different. We can do things with blueprints that we couldn't do before. We can force build. But yeah, there's no just like actual new content that that we get before the rocket. The rockets are cheaper though. So that helps. Ah uh, yes, they are. They are way more cheaper. But the content in the early game, it's not from the DLC, it's from the Vanilla Factoria. Right. So that was the the problem for me. I do think uh it will help a lot of people be motivated to get to a rocket because most of the game is now behind launching a rocket whereas before the motivation to launch a rocket wasn't necessarily there because it didn't really unlock much other than like some infinite technologies. Yes, definitely. Right now it's it's way more important to get to the rocket and get uh, new science packs, go to different planets, especially when you look at the rewards you, get, you are getting from other planets. It's worth to bring uh, new technology to, to Navis and bring them to new planets. So yeah, now you are way more motivated. And uh, if you want to deal with the cliffs, you have to get to new planet to research them. So, <laughs> oh boy, that was also the motivation I was discussing a lot with Kovarex. Yeah, not having cliff explosives on Navis is interesting. I I've played with cliffs off ninety nine percent of the time since they were created. Um, but didn't you? S there's new cliff generation in the you know in the new map generation fff that they announced this was a while ago now they they've changed how cliffs generate and are they less annoying now would you say so i did four full playthroughs uh, alone on in my house so in the first one a long time ago there was the old cliffs i started on desert there was the biters everywhere and i spent like 20 hours so on novis alone and i was I had so bad time without the cliff explosives and everything had to be a spaghetti uh, because you had to go <coughs> around the, the cliffs. And yeah, it was painful experience. I was even considering quitting playing the, the expansion 
when I was just on Nauvis because of how annoying <laughs> it was to deal with the biters on desert and with cliffs. On my second playthrough, when there was a new cliffs uh, generation, I haven't researched cliffs for the whole game. I just live with the cliffs because they are less annoying to that point that you can just live with them. Wow. So yeah, new cliffs That's a big are difference. way better. That's sweet to hear. Yeah, I, I'm pretty excited to try because I'm going to try just all default settings when I when I do my space age run. So it'll be it'll be interesting to deal with cliffs again, but I'm excited for the new terrain generation. I think that's really cool. What are some other features that um, you've really been enjoying about space age, like the like the new cliff generation, for example? I mean, I am basically a vanilla guy. I prefer to play unmodded games, so I. I wait more for the new changes to the core of the game, like train interruption, force uh, blueprint placement, new circuits, and uh, all of that quality of life. Like, I love that you can do more stuff with the circuits. You can read the whole belt content. You can change the recipe on the assembly machines. You can, yeah, you can do way more. And I can't wait to see what community will do with this new circuit logics. Because you can make mall, which is just single assembler that self adjusts uh, itself to demand of your factory. And you can just make the whole factory out of those self adjusting assembly machines. And yeah, it's, it will be massive. That's also so the, cool. The train interruptions, it's, it's awesome. It's like playing with uh, all of the quality of life mods just in the vanilla. Uh, what was the name of that mod that was changing the trains? LTN, uh, probably. Yeah, yeah, that one. So it's basically just just in core. You yeah, make... I'm so excited for that. Yeah, you can just make the one train station name and uh, for for the inputs and one for the outputs, and this is the whole logic you need for your whole network of trains, because the train will automatically adjust to what is inside it and go to the correct station. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, just a week away. Um, oh, man. So what are some other things you, you would like to share with us? Uh, other things uh, related to Space Age, Factorio, YouTube, or... Anything. The world's your oyster, Trupin. Oh, no. Uh, so talking about me being addicted to YouTube. <laughs> so uh, when I started, uh, I spent like... Uh, I think I got monetized on YouTube in like two months, which is uh, pretty quick for anybody who tried doing YouTube. It's usually taking people years. Yeah, that's great. Uh, oh, yeah, thanks. And I thought that YouTube is just a simple thing. You just do good videos, people watch them, and you are doing good. But when I uh, spent more time on YouTube and asked uh, other people from the YouTube community, I realized that... The fact that I am chronically online and addicted to YouTube can help quite a bit with making a YouTube channel. Like I think at this point I have more than 10,000 just watching YouTube videos. And this is something that you haven't realized it can be a useful skill. Just 10,000 10, hours of being wasted watching YouTube turns out they can be helpful. Yeah, you're a professional YouTube watcher, so you know what people like. And you know what you uh, like. Yes. <laughs> what uh, what yes. are some of your favorite YouTube channels? Uh, YouTube channels. So I think my favorite YouTube channel is I Did a Thing. This is a guy uh, with uh, awesome humor that's doing crazy builds. Like, uh, yeah, a lot of the, the videos are, let's call them not political correctly. Like he's making some guns out of the weird stuff and uh, chainsaw machines and all of yeah he does like engineering weird like engineering builds right yes crazy engineering builds so i'm doing similar stuff but in factorio <laughs> that's awesome yeah i've seen i've seen some of, of their videos those are cool yeah like when i find out about this channel i just watch every single video in a few days so yeah i love the channel yeah, that's how you know you found a good one is when you you have to binge the entire backlog. Yeah, like I think the quality of videos on YouTube are getting better over the years, but at the same time, the suggestions uh, for videos are getting worse. So when I find the first video from that guy, 
I just watched the whole channel and why it wasn't recommended to me earlier. So yeah, I, I just think the the YouTube is getting worse when it comes to recommendations and yeah, even so the quality is getting better. Or maybe I just watch so many good videos that they are not left on the platform. Yeah, you've run out you've run out of good videos. No, I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. Oh man, Trippet, it's been so fun to have you on the podcast. You're you're so fun to hang out with. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you for inviting me, asking me questions, and it was a blast. Yeah. Do you have any other kind of other final thoughts to leave the the listeners with? Uh oh wait, I, I have this in the in the notes, but I have to find it <laughs> uh, where where it is. Uh yeah, so I cannot find this this note, but the thing is, uh, it's a little bit more motivation, I uh, think, that right now it's so easy to get good at, at something. You can just watch a YouTube video about anything, about uh, drawing stuff, about sculpture, about anything, literally anything. And if you spend some time on it, you will get to like 1% of the best people and you can make a job out of it. You can be pro at it. Just a little bit of effort and you can achieve a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's that's actually really helpful. I think it the the barrier to starting things is often mostly in our heads. Yes, currently you can do whatever you like and you can be pro in it in no time. Just a little bit of effort and yeah. And, and 10,000 hours of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> If, helps. if you want to do YouTube, it's it gonna help, <laughs> but you don't need ten thousand. It's it's too much. Even for me, I think it's too much. <laughs> for sure. Oh, that's funny. All right. Well, huge thank you, Trupin. Um, how can people find you out on the internet or support you? Like, do you have a Patreon? Obviously, you've got your YouTube channel. So, what are all your socials? Yeah. So the best place to find it is, uh, of course, on YouTube. I have the members on YouTube. So if you want to support me, you can do it this way. But just Google Trupin, and you should find me. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're a pretty unique name. Easy to find trooping out in the wild. Uh, that's awesome. So, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll wrap up the podcast here. Um, if you'd like to support Troopin, go ahead over to his YouTube channel, do the membership thing. That's really cool. And he's got lots of great videos. His shorts are hilarious. So go check it out. Um, it's a perfect blend of factory and funny, which not many channels are doing. So I love that. Um, but yeah, as far as the podcast, uh, we will continue casting on the first and third Sunday as usual. So in two weeks, we will have Exterminator as our guest, which is really exciting. He's another Factorio content creator, and we'll be celebrating the launch of Factorio because we will be doing the podcast literally the day before uh, Factorio Space Age drops. So that'll be a fun podcast. So make sure to join us again in two weeks. And as usual, it'll release to all the podcasting services on the following day. As usual, if you have any questions, ideas for topics, or guests, head over to the Crydania Discord and let me know there. I'll put a link in the description. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Always remember, the factory must grow. All right. What, what, what now? What now? Uh, I don't know. We could do whatever we want now. We're free. That was great. Oh, oh yeah, thanks. So yeah. I prepared a lot of notes and I end up not reading them at, at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty normal. I feel like at least I don't know if you're anything like me, but when I prepare notes, often it's to think through it in my head. But then I kind of already have those notes in my head now. And I just kind of it was more like to help me think through the, the whole thing. Yeah, so usually I'm doing too much of brainstorming and then I have a huge amount of notes that I don't want to read anymore because there is too much of it. Like when I look at my Trello board for YouTube, <laughs> there's thousands of cards and I don't even want to look at them. And I, I think I have like 10 uh, boards with uh, just YouTube video ideas because I don't want to look at the previous one. I just make a new one and a new <laughs> one and... Ah, uh, it's, it's funny. End up well. So, so your organization of your notes is maybe uh, not not a thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's far from being perfect. That's funny. Yeah, I um, I'm also kind of like that. Like when I come up with ideas, I'll write them on random sheets of paper, and then I'll end up like never actually consolidating those into one place. So I just have like random sheets of paper everywhere with stuff that's like 
only half of an idea. It's not even like the whole thing that I was thinking. It's just like, oh, you know, write a tips and tricks on trains. And then it's like, wait, what does that even mean? Like, what was I? I don't even remember writing this. <laughs> yeah, it also happens to me. Like when I'm writing a script for a video and I leave some notes like, uh, get nuked. And then I recording the <laughs> stuff and I wonder what, what I meant with get nuked. Like, what is the context? <laughs> Yeah, like, do I launch a nuke at myself? Do I, do I, yeah, have a nuclear reactor explode? Yeah, I, I forgot what was the joke, and now I have to come up with a new one. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Again, that's the those sound like things that comedians say. I, I maintain you, you are a comedian. You're, you're the real yeah, deal. Like it, it depends what is the the definition. Also, I think people underestimate the, the, their skills. Like uh, when somebody watching my videos, 10, 10 minutes of, of funny stuff, they think, oh, damn, the, the troop and it's like 100% funny. And when I am with myself for the rest of the time, I, I'm not funny for the all of the time. <laughs> you channel all your funniness into those few minutes. <laughs> yes, I'm collecting all of those fu funny stuff and put it into a, a video. Yeah, but that, but again, that's what comedians do. Like, I, I think I think you do a great job of that. Thank you. I think the pandemic helped me a lot when it comes to all of that stuff, uh, because when the pandemic hit, a lot of people had problem with interacting with other people on the internet. Like they are used to seeing other people's faces. They are not used to just talking to computer. And on the other hand, I was like, I was in my um, area. When I was talking with teachers doing online classes, I was like the the guy asking all of the questions and <laughs> I was the most active one when everybody else was scary how, how to use the computer and do all of yeah. that stuff. You finally so felt when, like you were in your prime. Yes, yes. So pandemic uh, was a problem for, for many people to go, off, uh, to go online with everything. And for me, it was kind of a blessing that I was able to do all of the stuff online. Also, when it comes to commuting, I was spending like between two and four hours just to commute every single day. Jeez. And, and when the pandemic hit, I basically got a half, uh, half, time, half time of full-time full -time job back in my life. And I just had too much time to do. So I guess <laughs> I start YouTube channel. That's amazing. Yeah, that's so much commuting. That's a huge time save. Yeah, and when you are getting this time back from like, uh, from from day to day, like um, and instantly when you commuting uh, 20, 40 hours, uh, no, 20 hours a, a week, and then you are getting all of those hours back the next week, uh, it's it's a lot of time, and yeah, yeah, you, you have to do something with that. That's cool. Oh man, good times. Well, again, thank you so much for hanging out. This has been awesome. Thanks for joining the podcast. Oh, yeah. Thank you for inviting me once once more. Yeah. So should we raid somebody or what is your plan now? I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe we could raid somebody. That's not a bad idea. Who's out there right now? Or maybe I'm going to ask you some question. Why did you start Ooh. doing the content? How it started? <laughs> We'd have to do a whole nother podcast for that. I mean, the short <laughs> answer is I just, I really wanted to... I had been playing... So... I always get super involved in the discords of games that I play and I like to make spreadsheets and I do super nerdy stuff like I make math uh, like I love to I love to math out the games that I'm playing and I I am slash was a math teacher like teaching in the classroom high school kids math and I thought to myself I'm like I could so the the channel that inspired me was actually Tuplex. Uh, it was his Bob's Angels run way back in the day and I was like I could do that. I could be, I think, entertaining and informative. And I think I have a perspective on like the teaching. I could like help teach people to play the game as I play the game. And I could be helpful and inspiring to people. And I think like I've always wanted to create a positive community too around the game where people can encourage each other and chat about games and just kind of nerd out together and, and have fun. So it was kind of just this vague idea of like, it'd be fun to have a community. It'd be fun to make videos that some people like. And 
yeah, I just I started and it started out slow and it was just this really slow, steady growth over the years. Um, but it's been it's been really fun and I've been really grateful to all the people that have joined the the Cridania community because there are a lot of positive people there. We have a lot of good talks. We have a lot of fun talks. We talk about the games. I feel like it's just been kind of exactly what I hoped for. Like like you said, the Factorio community is really great. And so it's it's kind of been easy because most of the people that watch my videos are already great people, which is not I feel like not true for a lot of video games. Um, so that's nice. Yes, I had some experience with Fleet of Legends and the people there are. Yeah, the, this is a different kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it helps to have a mature audience kind of being your core audience already, because then you're not having to fight off hordes of seven year olds or whatever. So that helps. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, have you looked at the channels we can rate? Yeah, so someone said Anti Elites is online. I don't, let me see. Oh, yeah, Where's... he's doing 100% run of or planning the run. I think he's doing the planning. Yeah, it yeah. looks like that. Let's go rate him. Okay, sure. All right, well, thanks again, Trupin. I'll see you around. Yeah, thank you for invite. Yeah, have a great rest of your day. Okay, see you. See ya. Because they don't work, but my changes always work. <laughs> I mean, this is like a trivial exchange, right, chat? Did you like. <laughs>